Hello world, good morning, this is Barbie Lee. This is Shake Talk. This is where we shake up your wake up and we change your life. Well, I don't, you do, but it's about quality of life and it's about really improving and assuring you have an amazing quality of life. And we do it one shake at a time here at The Best Breakfast Ever. And we're all about just having a conversation, right? So I come on every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and about eight o'clock in the morning, and we have a conversation. So last week we started, uh, I started uh, the book, well, talking about the book, uh, The 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership. And I'm like, okay, I'll just keep going through the book. So today we're talking about chapter two, which is learning through curiosity. So here's the book that we're doing, right? So you can take a screenshot of that. I don't know how to make these straight. I get them always so sideways. Ooh, there we go. Okay, screenshot. So the 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership. A New Paradigm for Sustainable Success by Detmer Chapman and Klimp. So here's what I love about this book. It, it's a leadership book. It's a book about, um, oh, shake is leaking. Um, it's a book about, uh, you know, how to be a conscious leader, how to lead in a way um, that isn't, you know, the, the tyrant, the my way or the highway kind of thing, and how to really be conscious about how you are with people. and it's not about just leadership like CEOs, and that's what most of the stories are about, CEOs and companies and stuff like that. Um, but it's a really great way to live life. So today's conversation, uh, look, did you see that? My shake is surprised. Did you see the two eyes and the surprise? He's going, because <laughs> he's curious. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen on live video. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so commitment two says learning through curiosity. And I'll put the commitment again in the comments after when we're all done. So it says, I commit to growing in self-aware. Oh, so first of all, remember there's an above the line and a below the line. I'm not a fan of that terminology, but um, so that's what they use in the book. So people who are following along in the book understand that terminology. Um, but it's there's two commitments, right? It's a commitment to be a conscious leadership, a con conscious leader or not. So the conscious leader says, I commit to growing in self-awareness. I commit to regarding every interaction as an opportunity to learn, and I commit to curiosity as a path of rapid learning. So that's the conscious leader. The unconscious leader says, but doesn't, but does this, I commit to being right and to seeing this situation as something that is happening to me. I commit to being defensive, especially when I am certain that I am right. Those are two powerful statements, right? So think about times in your world where you were growing in self-awareness and you were guarding every interaction as the opportunity to learn and you were committing to curiosity as a path of rapid learning. Because we've all had those times, right? We've all had those moments. And then think about when did you commit to being right? Right? When did you see the situation as something that's happening to you or you were defensive? And, and even when you knew you were right, you were defensive and that's why you were felt so compelled to be right. So I love this chapter. I love all 15 chapters, by the way. Um, but this one really gets me thinking about self-awareness and learning. And, you know, I, I have numerous conversations with some people and and, you know, the conversation often revolves around self-awareness. And a lot of times they don't know it revolves around self-awareness. <laughs> um, but I, I, I try and ask questions and try and get people thinking about things in a way maybe they haven't thought of them before. So, for example, if I am not getting the results that I want in a particular situation, I sit down and I evaluate the situation and I'm like, okay, I did ABC and I got XYZ. Why? I don't know. I can blame and say, well, because this and this and this. No, no, no. I did A, B, and C and I got X, Y, and Z. That the rest of the alphabet in between is a result of my doing A, B, and C. So maybe there was a D and an E and an F and a G and an H and I, you know. So, so let me give you a, the example I use a lot. When there's an appointment 
and you're late because there's a train. Or you have an appointment and you're late because you didn't leave early enough to count, account for the fact that there might be a train. Right? One is being self-aware and the other one is using blame, right? So we talked about that in chapter one, radical responsibility. So how can I not be late next time? That's living in curiosity and learning through curiosity. How can I be on time next time? Well, I know I'm crossing a train track. I don't know if there's going to be a train. I don't know what the train schedules are. Can I look up the train schedules? Is it possible? Like, is there an app? I don't know. I'm just saying these are questions that I'm asking. So is there an app that I can look up what time the trains come through that particular crossing? I wonder if there is. That's learning through curiosity. Or you go, hmm, you know what? I don't want to find an app. I don't really care. So I'm going to plan 15 minutes early just in case there's a train. Because typically, well, around here, trains don't last more than seven, eight minutes as they're crossing, unless they do that stoppy thing and then go back and come forward, you know, pick up a cart. But still, at most, it'll be about 15 minutes. Now, if you ever waited behind a train for longer, don't tell me, well, sometimes, it, then figure out whatever your timing is and make that work. So if you do A, B, and C, so get up a little bit earlier, leave in time, so in case there's a train, it doesn't affect your arrival time, and then you, you know, maybe listen to some great cartoons on the way. Then X, Y, Z happens. You're on time for your meeting. And it doesn't matter that there's a trainer. It doesn't matter that there's an extra red light. Or it wouldn't even matter if there's an accident. None of that, or heavy traffic, none of that would matter if you were self-aware and you learned through curiosity. So figuring out when you do ABC, and you get the result of X, Y, Z. Why do you do that? Like, wh wh why does that happen? Why do you get that result? And, and that's what this chapter is about. It says self-awareness and learning agility. I love that learning agility, right? Being agile in your learning are what commitment to of conscious leadership all about. So it says for uh, current research on leadership shows that over the course of our careers, four competencies turn up or trump all others as the greatest predictors sustained of, of, sustained, sust, eh, of su sustained success. You try that one. Self-awareness, learning agility, communication, and influence. So we're talking about self-awareness and learning agility. So when we are in unconscious leadership and we're thinking about being right, then some people are right to their core. And they're right. And they're going to fight because they're right. I look at it in two ways. One way is because they typically don't have anything else. They have no other control in their life. So they're going to control this conversation and be right. Or number two is they've not learned through curiosity or they haven't thought about it from another perspective or somebody else's perspective. So the only thing they have to discuss is how right they are. And it's not like they're going to say, I'm right and you're wrong. No, no, no. They will find ways within their mind to try and change your mind to see that they're right. Mm. And this happens, and it happens so often, right? It can happen at the grocery store, right? So I, I, I was asking for an item the other day, and the lady goes, oh, you'll find it in you know aisle three, whatever she said. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And I'm like, I was already in aisle three, and that's not where they keep that, but okay. So I went down again, and I looked, and I went, okay. So I went looking, and I asked, uh, I asked one of the customers, I'm like, have you ever, you know, she's like, I don't know, but you know where I think it should be? And that's where it was, right, and let's say aisle nine. And as I was leaving, I saw the lady, and I said, I, I said to myself, I should tell her. I should tell her it's in aisle nine and not in aisle three. But that was my need to be right. Now. Then my ego said, well, you should tell her so that if somebody else asks her, then she has the right answer. I tried to convince myself that I was right and I should tell this lady that she was wrong. I didn't. I didn't do either. I just went and bought my stuff and said, I have what I need. And I walked away because that was my need to be right. Right? So today and this week, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning, Mountain Time, we're going to be talking about this learning through curiosity. So I'm going to redo the, uh, reread the conscious leadership and unconscious. So conscious is, 
I commit to growing in self-awareness. I commit to regarding every interaction as an opportunity to learn. I commit to curiosity as a path of rapid learning. So that's what we're going to focus on this week. Ah, I can't wait for Wednesday. It's so exciting. So join us. Follow me. Follow me on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't, uh, if you missed all the other Shake Talks that I've done, they're up on YouTube. And if you're on LinkedIn, reach out to me on LinkedIn because I'm active on there again now. So have an amazing day and a glorious Monday.